thanks for everyone uh, for joining me today on this webinar on using spreadsheets in FCS Express 7. Um, today with me on the line is Keia Ghosh um, that will take care of you and all your questions in real time. Again, I will try to answer the question um, directly, um, but if I will not be able to do that um, during the presentation, um, Keia will take care of you. Okay, so I want to start saying that FCS Express 7, um, as you may probably already know, allows you to use the spreadsheets feature to access basically most of the functionalities of a Microsoft Excel-like spreadsheet directly in FCS Express, with the advantage that you will have a direct link into your data, to your statistic, to your gates, tokens. So again, uh, the idea is that the spreadsheet will allow you to have an integrated Excel with live updating capability. So you will see once you will move a gates, once you will once you will load a new sample, all the spreadsheet content will update, all the calculation will update, and so on. So basically, the spreadsheet in FCS Express provides you um, with all the familiar tools that you already know in Excel. Uh, in FCS Express, and so basically while keeping the, the special needs of cytometrists in mind. So I want to very briefly show you the agenda of today. So first of all, why using spreadsheets? Um, then how uh, you can use the integrated spreadsheet if you are already using a spreadsheet in another software. Then you, we will see how to create and populating the spreadsheet, how to create formula, how to create charts. Uh, you will see this is a very uh, cool feature in FCS Express. And at the end, how to make your spreadsheet, let's say, more appealing, like with conditional formatting and other formatting option. And last but not least, how to export the spreadsheet uh, as a whole object or also few condensed statistics uh, from it to um, external uh, format, like again, Excel or CSV if you want. So why using spreadsheet? Well, basically because it, it happens, um, it's not even so rare that you need to make some calculation like uh, the ratio between two population or maybe you want to calculate a formula like the staining index, we will see an example of this. Maybe you want to um, calculate a regression uh, between a given, like a concentration of a drug and maybe you want to retrieve the IC50 for the drug. So, uh, basically for the same reason why we are using spreadsheets um, every day outside FCS Express. Um, and again, if you already have some layout, some uh, Excel spreadsheet, and uh, the question is how can I then convert those Excel spreadsheets in FCS Express? Well, you will see it's very easy because in FCS Express, um, you will have access to the same formula, to the same mathematical function, statistical function that you already have in Excel. So recreating your calculation inside FCS Express, it's really straightforward. Um, I want to start by creating a spreadsheet with a, a completely uh, brand new layout. So let me just go here. You see, I'm using FCS Express. I will not really um, dedicate time to basic functionality like opening plots and gates uh, because we have really tons of webinar uh, and material on our website so I will go straight um, I will open a few files here from my hard drive you see I'm opening FCS file and I will I'm going to do something really basic so I will just open one plot you see a density plot and I will create a gate on a population of interest let me increase a little bit the zoom here and let's say that we are interested in all those cells so I will just create a gate and I will call it cells and now I want to go straight and I want to create a spreadsheet uh, together with you so, first of all, uh, if you want to insert a spreadsheet, um, as you usually do when you want to insert any other object in FCS Express, like a plot, like a text box, a picture, um, just go here in the Insert tab and you can click on New Spreadsheet. 
And you see you have this create new spreadsheet dialog that allows you to give a name to, to the spreadsheet that you are creating. Um, basically, this is like the name that you see in Excel. Um, when you open an Excel, you have different worksheets. So this is the same name. So let's say that this is my first spreadsheet. Uh, you see we have an option here to open Data Navigator. I'm not going to click this because I want to show you how to open the Data Navigator manually. And then of course you know that you have this checkbox so the next time you will be able to check it if you want. So I will click OK and you see this is my spreadsheet. Again, it's like Excel. Um, so there is nothing to be scared about this. Uh, you see you have different columns, you have different rows. You can open multiple spreadsheets actually, and you can keep track of all the spreadsheets that you want, that you have in your layout, again by opening the gate, the, sorry, the, the data navigator here. You see it's in the view tab. So the data navigator allows you to, let me dock it, it's probably better um, for you to keep track of this on my screen. Um, you see the data, the data navigator lists all the data set. In this case, I have first data set, which is an FCS file, which is open in this plot. And I also have a second data set, which is now it's empty. It's my spreadsheet, which is displayed in this, in this object. So this object is this actual spreadsheet. Um, if I open a new spreadsheet, again, um, in, in Excel, you have multiple worksheets. In FCS Express, this is basically the only difference with Excel. You have multiple uh, spreadsheets. So you can go here and I can create a new one. If I click OK, now I have a new one. And you see that my data navigator is listing the new, the new spreadsheet, right? Um, I also want to show you that you can create multiple copy of the same spreadsheet. Okay, so if I select these and I duplicate, you see now I have two copy, and I have two copy of the same spreadsheet here. Okay, you will see that those are really two identical copies. So if I type something here, you see now this is appearing in this other copy as well. While, for example, it's not appearing here because this again, it's like a different worksheet. So um, let me just get rid of all this additional um, spreadsheet. Now you know that um, how you can keep track of the spreadsheet that you have. And let's just focus on the spreadsheet that we've just um, created. <clears throat> Sorry. So um, when you click on the spreadsheet, so when you're while you're working with your spreadsheet, uh, you may have noticed that here in the ribbon bar, you have a new tab which is called spreadsheet and actually uh, include two different um, sub tab here. So one is called layout, the other one is called formula. So and if you are working with the spreadsheet, you see you have multiple buttons available here to work with. So very briefly, the layout tab allows you to organize and customize uh, the cells and the spreadsheet content. Like you see here, you have the ability to change the fonts, you have the ability to change the alignment, merge and unmerge cells, insert token, we will see this late, sorry, uh, insert token, we will see this later on. You have conditional formatting, sorting um, AZ and ZEA. Um, you can insert and remove rows and column. You can format cells, uh, freeze pane. So you see, it's basically like Excel. Again, nothing to be scared about. Just imagine to be in Excel um, and do whatever you will do in Excel. You see, I, I just typed in my name here. You can type in whatever you want. You can type a number, for example, exactly as we'll do in Excel. And I want to anticipate that in this second tab, we are including all sort of possible formula you see here, financial, logical, text, uh, statistical, mathematical. So maybe some of those formula, I mean, maybe you're not going to use all of those formula like financial formula, but again, this is just to show you that we try to reproduce exactly what you have in Excel. So if you're familiar with Excel, um, it would be really easy to get familiar with the integrated spreadsheet too. Um, do you have any questions so far? Do you have um, any curiosity? Again, if yes, feel free to type in in the question section and we will take care of, of answering you, okay? Um, so 
I want to show you at this stage um, how you can um, populate the spreadsheet. Okay, you already saw that uh, you can type in through your keyword. Um, so this is very easy. Um, you can type any number you want. And of course, exactly as you usually do in Excel, you can also create a um, formula operation, right? So usually in Excel, you start with an equal and then you click on a cell and then you click on, for example, plus, and then you click on another cells and then you press return. And this is the results of my calculation. You see, I want to show you that we do have a uh, reference. So you see, this is A1, this is A2. I can move on this reference wherever I want, okay? Exactly as you would do in Excel. And let me show you this, for example, let's say that you have here like 100 and then you have equal this divided by two. Okay, you see this little box here? So when you hover the mouse, it turns to be like a small cross. So this tells you that you can grab the cells and draw it down, drop it down. So now you see you're basically copy the same formula, but moving the cells down. So this is C2 divided by two, this is C3, this is C4 and so on. So this is a good way in which you can fill multiple cells in the spreadsheet very easily and very quickly. But again, uh, it's probably something that you do every day in uh, in Excel. Um, so I just want to show you that it's really like Excel. Um, then I showed you that you can type in, uh, but you know, this is not really what we want to do usually. So let's say that I want to do something with some statistic from my analysis. Like you see the percentage here, it's 72.72. I don't really want to type because if I type, I mean, and then I go here and change my gates, um, the manually typed value will, will not update, okay? So in FCS Express, uh, you can do much more. And I want to show you now how to populate the spreadsheet by using drag and, drag and drop, which is really awesome. So for example, let's say that I want to place here or anyway in my spreadsheet, some statistic, uh, referring to my sales gate and it's super easy. So here is my plot, here is my gate, just drag the gate within the Excel, within the spreadsheet, sorry, and drop it wherever you want. And now you see when I drop it in cell A2, this dialog appears, okay? So you see that the sales gate, this is the list of the gates available in my layout. Now I just have the no gate, and the sales gate. If you have 10 gates, 20 gates, they will all be listed here. You will be able to select multiple gates. In this case, I can, uh, I'm interested in the sales gate and you see it's already selected. So if you drag and drop a specific gate, that gate will be automatically selected here. So basically at the end, the only thing that you need to do is define which statistic you want to insert. And you want to, you can insert multiple statistics. Like let's say that I want the number of events and the percentage um, to select multiple entries here, just press the control button on your keyboards and you will be able to do this. So I'm going to click okay. And now you see those two numbers, those two value with title have been entered in my, in my Excel. Okay, and guess, this is the beauty. So if I move my gate, the numbers, the value in the Excel are going to update automatically. So this is because I didn't type those values. Those are automatically updating statistics. Those are tokens for those of you who are familiar with tokens. And I don't need to mention that if you create a formula like this divided by this, since those two value will automatically update, also the results of my formula will update automatically, you see. So think about doing this without FCS Express. Think about doing this with any other software uh, that require you, for example, to export value in a, in, a, um, in a spreadsheet outside the flow software. Every time you move a gate, every time you do something to your analysis, you will have to update the spreadsheet. You will have to re-export again, okay? And 
the fact that these value updates in real time when you move the gates, it's just part of the beauty because if you have multiple files, let me open again the data list. You see here in my data list, I have nine files, okay? If I scroll through my files here, you see the plot is updating, you already know this, but also the spreadsheet content is updating. All the calculation are updating, right? The same if I scroll through my sample here. You see, this is the beauty. This is fully compatible, for example, with batch processing, if you uh, are familiar with batch processing. So it's, it's very easy to create a template like this. Uh, again, this is very, very simple. It's just one plot and one spreadsheet with, with one formula, but it can be any, any complex template you want, like multiple pages, multiple plots, multiple gates, a lot of formula, a lot of very complex formula like here. So you really have a lot of flexibility with, with these regards. And what about if you want to populate the spreadsheet with um, statistic that comes from multiple files at the same time? Because you see now, um, this first strategy, so dragging and dropping from uh, a gate, um, only allows me to populate the spreadsheet with data from one files. But no worry, we will see how you can do that and it's very easy. And as you will see, it's again based on drag and drop. But before moving them, let me also show you that um, the gates, it's not the only um, things that you can drag and drop. So if you have markers, you can drag and drop markers. Uh, you can also drag and drop an entire plot. So let me just drag and drop the entire plot here. I will release and you can see here, I can define whether I want to grab a statistic and a statistic can be any of the statistics that we saw before, like number of events and median and percentages and blah, blah, blah. But you can also drag and drop the the, the plots and then retrieve a keyword. So keywords are all those metadata that are saved by your instrument. There are a few keywords that are standard. Um, some other keywords are, let's say, uh, specific for each instrument. Each keyword has a specific, let's say, code. Uh, if you remember the code, you can just type it here. Like if you want to retrieve the keyword that stands for the file name, uh, I know it's $FIL. But let's say that you don't know it, okay? Just click on this ellipse and the list of keywords will open. Okay, so those are all the keywords stored in the file that I'm using. So you see there are a lot of keywords uh, like the sample name, all the parameter uh, keywords like the voltages or the parameter name. And what I want to uh, insert here is $FIL. Let's see, you see the file name. I will click OK, and this is the file name. And again, uh, if I scroll through my sample, that file name token in the spreadsheet will update automatically. So this is really um, important to keep in mind. The main advantage of the spreadsheet is that whatever you do within the spreadsheet, um, with whatever like type of tokens, statistic, keywords you do, you add to the spreadsheet, it will update automatically, uh, either when you change data file or when you move a gate, when you move a marker or so on. Okay, so now let's go back to, to the question that we had um, like two minutes ago. So what uh, I can do if I want to populate the spreadsheet with statistic that actually uh, comes from all my files, all the files in the data list, or maybe not all, but but few, few of them. I mean, it's up to you. In this case, I want all. So instead of dragging and dropping from plots, I will select the file within the data list and I will drag and drop the files from the data list and I will drop them into the spreadsheet. You see the same dialogue as before appears, like I can select statistic, I can select keywords. Let's say that I want to select a statistic. I will click OK. And now I can, this is basically a similar dialogue as before. You see, I can select a gate. I can select multiple statistic. I can select the file name. Uh, I can also select, like you see other statistics, like the median. And it will be, for example, the median of a given parameters, like CD4, let's say. 
okay? So in this case, I will populate the spreadsheet with three different statistics, three different columns. Let's say one containing the file name, one containing the number of events of the sales gate, one containing the median CD4 P7 within the sales gate. So let me click OK. And now the software, it's uh, basically following my analysis. It's using my analysis to retrieve those statistics. And you see, what I want to point out is that you don't really need to display the file in, in plots. You see, in my plots, I, I, I do have a single plot here. I'm just displaying in this plot file number one. Um, but you see, this is just the proof that the analysis, it's automatically applied to all the files in the data list, okay? And indeed, now, if I move my gates, you see that all my events, all my medians are immediately updating live in the spreadsheet, okay? Um, yeah, I see a question coming through is um, basically, how can I adjust a gate specifically for one sample? And that's a good question. Uh, you see here by default in FCS Express gate are universal. So if I move this gate now, you see that all the statistic for all the file update immediately because this analysis, again, it's automatically applied to all the sample of my data list, but that's not an issue. So if you see that a file uh, require a different gate, so let's say that scrolling through your file you see a gate which is like in this case this is a very weird sample you want to adjust the sales gate without affecting the other file you just want to adjust the sales gate on this file that's pretty easy uh, here in the gating tab we have this button data specific gate so just select the gate you can click within the gate in any place you want click on the data specific gate and then that's it you can move it and now you can see for example in the spreadsheet that I'm adjusting this gate. I'm not affecting any of the other sample. I'm only affecting this one, 43, 84, 8, 22, which is this. Okay, this is the only one that I'm affecting. If I move the sales gate on any of the other sample, you see, those samples are all using what we call master gate. So if I move the master gate, everything updates in the spreadsheet except in row five. So the file 4384, 8022, which is this one, because that file is using the data specific gate. Okay, so yes, good question. You can um, you can adjust gate sample by sample. And of course, the spreadsheet will reflect uh, that um, specific uh, change. Okay, any, any other questions so far? Again, just type in if you want. Um, so, I want to spend a few um, moments also to um, give you more, let's say, um, details about how you can format the spreadsheet uh, and how you can create some formula uh, now that you have more numbers. Again, let's go back here in the layout tab. You see we have different um, formatting option, basic stuff like you can select and maybe you can change the color and uh, make the, the title bold. Um, you can merge and unmerge cells. So for example, let's say that if you have here a huge, sorry, too fast. If you have, oh, if you have here a huge, oh, my mouse. If you have here a huge title, you can just click on merge cells. And then of course you can go here and unmerge. Um, so this is, let's say, what you usually do in, uh, in Excel. Um, something very cool is the conditional formatting. So you see you can highlight any range of cells and here the conditional formatting. Uh, we have a lot of different, let's say, aesthetical effect, uh, like color scale, data bar, icon, um, different rules. Um, they are pretty nice because sometimes you have a lot of number on your screen. You want to have a quick view um, about which file maybe it's, I don't know, it's um, above a given threshold or something like that, or it's uh, like an outlier. So you can use conditional formatting. You see, this is a, like a color level, or maybe you want to use, for example, in this case, like a data bar. So those are pretty useful. And of course, um, 
those are live updating. So if I move my sample, my, sorry, my gate here, you see, I can see uh, immediately um, the, the live updating format, conditional formatting into the spreadsheet. So that's that's pretty useful to make your spreadsheet more uh, clear and um, and appealing. Uh, but we have a few more options here. Again, I didn't mention, but uh, yes, I mentioned before, I didn't show you. Uh, you can, for example, insert columns, uh, and of course, you can uh, delete columns. You can format cells also by going here. So if you if you click on one or more cells, uh, let's do it here. I want to show you the border, for example. You see, you can go to format cells and you have basically the same option that you have in Excel. Like you can format the cells in, in, in terms of type, like for example, the number, the date, the time, scientific notation. Uh, you can change the alignment. This is the same thing, for example, that you can do here at the top in the layout tab. Uh, the same for the fonts, the border. Uh, for example, you want to do these and these. Um, the fill, maybe you want to add a fill to these cells, the protection. So those are all the things that you already have in Excel. And you see in this case, I have a gray fill and the border around these four cells. Um, I can click undo, for example, if I want to, uh, to undo this, or I want to show you this one, so clear. You see, you can clear all, you can clear the formatting, you can clear the content, or of course both. Um, you can freeze panes, you can add comment, we will see how the export works. Um, but you see, it's, it's pretty easy to handle, uh, it's quite intuitive, so you can really do a lot of stuff in, uh, in, um, with this spreadsheet. Any any other question with this regard? Okay, okay. So let me move on. I want to show you how to deal with formula and that those are probably the most interesting stuff at this stage. Um, so I will move here to the formula tab. You see we have different category. The first thing that I want to show you is the auto sum here. It's not only for sum, but is you see it's automatically calculating few pre-customized statistic and it's very easy you can just um, sorry you can just select a range of cells and then you can go here so even if you do not remember how to type the sum how to type the the average just go here so you see I've selected b2 to b10 I will click on sum and this is the sum and maybe here I want to calculate the average and I will do the average okay so this is the first thing that I want to show you. Um, the second thing is how to do it manually, of course. If you know uh, the formula, you can do the same. So it's equal, sum, open parentheses, then select, and then close the parentheses. If you do not remember how to do it in Excel, uh, this is very easy. The first thing that I want to show you is just grab the formula from the uh, formula tab like for example statistical average and now you see it's equal average open parentheses and i'm now just selecting and press return but again maybe you don't even know how to access the formula maybe the formula it's not really um, easy like this so maybe you have like a syntax no worry uh, if you navigate on our user manual um, I open it here. You see, this is the user manual. It can be reached uh, from the um, customer resource page on our website. Or let me also mention this. It's very easy. File, help, and here you see the FCS Express manual. So it's the same thing. And what I want to show you is that if you navigate here, you see plots and other object, spreadsheet, sorry, spreadsheet and chart, spreadsheet formula definition. So this is the spreadsheet formula definition chapter. We group all the spreadsheet formula uh, in the category that you see in the formula tab. Uh, you see though, those are a lot. So those are all the details that you need to know uh, when you want to create a formula. Um, for example, if we go to the statistical function and for example, the average, you see it's equal average and then the range. So Pretty, pretty easy. Um, the formula that, for example, I want to show you now is a logical formula, or we will also do something mathematical formula. You see here, um, logical operator and logical function. And I want to show you this, the if. 
it's it's very useful because sometimes you again you have a lot of numbers and you want to create a sort of let's say a condition uh, you want to label um, pretty much like the conditional formatting but you want to add an evaluation term like uh, you want to clearly define whether the value is I don't know high or low it's okay or not okay it's um, normal or abnormal or whatever and this is a nice example so you see equal if then you have a condition like in this case a10 it's minus uh, it's um, less or equal equal than 100 and then you have the two let's say comment so this is when the condition is meet and this one when then the condition is is not meet is not met so i want to show you how to do that let's say that we want to create a new form a new column and let's say condition and let's say we want to evaluate the number of events and we will do if open parenthesis the number of events is higher than let's say 10000 then we want to say hi i add this um um accent um i think um just because it's a text and then i will say otherwise it's normal let's say okay and then I'll, I will press return. So this is high because this is 11,000. And I will just drag and drop as we did before. You see this little cross. I will drag and drop it. The reference will update automatically. So you see this is B10 higher than 10,000. And I can clearly see that this is high, this is high, and this is high. Okay. You can do something similar also with the conditional formatting. I, I will not go into much detail um, unless we have time, but you see here, you can manage the rule. Um, actually, I think we have time. So in this case, it's a predefined color scale. So from green to red, uh, let's say that we won't delete this. I want to create a new rule. So you see, we have multiple rules available. Okay, and what I want to use is just a two color scale, for example, or maybe you want to um, just, mm, let's say, evaluate whether um, a single um, cells uh, contains a value which is greater than or equal or less than something like we did with the conditional formatting. And in this case, it will be greater than 10,000. And let's say that you want to format the cells you see the same dialog as before in red. So I will click on OK here. And you see this is the same thing. This is higher than 10,000 uh, and they are red. And in this case, you have a condition that say high. Uh, if you move the gates, of course, this is live updating. OK, so in this case, I only two um, red flag here. So uh, do you have any, any questions so far? Please feel free to type in anything you want. Okay, I just want to show you another uh, example. So for example, the um, square root uh, is an example of a mathematical formula, but I think you get the point. So you see here, let's say that I don't remember how to do it. I will go to the mathematical category. I will scroll down until I can see the square root, which is this one. And then let's say the square root of this. And again, I can drag and drop. So this is this is really easy. It's uh, very easy to fill up the spreadsheet um, and to reproduce what you usually do in, uh, in Microsoft Excel. Taking advantage again, I want to reiterate this once more that as soon as you move a gates, a marker or whatever, um, everything is updating in, in real time. I want to show you a real life example um, of what you can do for, um, with, with your data. This is a um, titration experiment. You see here I have multiple plots with multiple dilution. Uh, I, I also have, of course, a 
let's say, uh, gating strategy here to clean up my my cells because, uh, sorry, before going um, to the uh, identification of the negative and the positive. You see, in this case, I'm using a marker. I have already populated here a column with the dilution. Then I have the standard deviation for the negative population. I have the MFI for the negative and for the positive. And what I want to show you is how it's easy, for example, to calculate the stain index. Um, so I just reported here the staining index formula, but probably you already know it. And this is just a reference. I'm going to create it here uh, from scratch. So equal, I will open the parentheses and I will do the positive MFI minus the negative MFI, close parentheses, divided by twice the standard deviation of the negative population, okay? So this is my staining index of the um, highest dilution. And now I will scroll down and this is the staining index of, of all my uh, different uh, dilution point. So um, you see, no need to do this in, uh, in Excel with the advantage that let's say that you are going to do this Two days in a row, like for two different antibodies, uh, maybe two different drug if if it's not a titration. Again, this can be your template, so you can go to the data list, load the new data, populate all your plots, populate the the the, the spreadsheet. Uh, of course, it will be done automatically. So the only thing that you will need to do at the end, for example, maybe it's just just in the gate uh, because the different sample may require different gate, and that's it. You see, I already have the staining index for this new population. Uh, no need to export, no need to copy and paste in any other software. Okay, and this example actually also allows me to show you that with the uh, spreadsheet, you can easily create chart. So let me go back to my, um, we will create a chart later on here, a regression. Let me go back here. Uh, let's start with something more um, basic, let's say. So here I have my files. I have different statistics in different columns. So yeah, that's probably the only thing to keep in mind. Um, when you need to create chart, a good practice here in FCS Express is um, just know that those charts will use the content of the columns. It's more or less like what you see in Prism. So Prism, it's really working column by column. Um, so this is this is quite similar. So for example, let's start by um, inserting any of those uh, charts. You see here we have bar plot, pie chart, box and whisker, and scatter plot. The first thing that I usually suggest when you want to plot, when you want to create a chart from a spreadsheet, is telling the spreadsheet to use the first row as labels. I mean to retrieve labels. So the software will know that this column will be called file name, this column will be called number of events, and so on. And this is very easy. You can right click in any place within the spreadsheet. Um, click on format. Do not confuse with format cells. Do not confuse with format tokens. Uh, those are different formatting options. Uh, I will just go with format. That means formatting the entire spreadsheet behavior. And you see here, I have different formatting options like the border. I mean, this is the border of the uh, entire spreadsheet, spreadsheet, the size. And here in spreadsheet data, the first checkbox is use values in a first row as label. So I'm going to check this. And now I can easily create my chart. So I want to start by showing you a bar plot. You see the bar plot is just plotting the columns that you have in your spreadsheet, okay? I'm using the file name column on the x-axis, so I'm plotting the file name. Now the file name are pretty huge, so this is why you cannot see all of them, but you can format this uh, bar plot to make to use a uh, smaller chart, smaller font. And here I can plot whatever I want, like median, I can plot uh, the square roots or whatever. Okay, you can also plot two different uh, series of data in the same spreadsheet, uh, or you can, for example, just duplicate the spreadsheet 
the, sorry, sorry, the, the bar plot and then displaying a different um, a different column, a different statistic. And you already know, if you move the gates, everything will update immediately in real time. So this is this is really useful. This is really saving a lot of time. Um, then let me make a little bit of room. I also want to show you the pie chart. Again, you see we are plotting different slices, uh, and here it's what you can um, is where you can define. So it's on the y-axis of the pie chart. Like if you want to plot the square root, this is the square root, and of course it's still live updating. You can format those charts as you want, like you can add the legend, you can change the fonts, you can change the border, the background, you can change the color of each slide, you can change the color of each bar. So I'm not going into details now because we have a dedicated webinar on uh, charting in FCS Express. I just want to show you what you can do with the spreadsheet in terms of chart. Um, I also want to show the box and whisker because it's a pretty new feature. We just released it a uh, couple of months ago. Um, it's really cool when you have some um, like like different experimental group. Like yes, let's say here group. Um, I don't want to type like control and then sorry control and then maybe this is another control and then this is a treated. Um, in this case, I will not type because one of the keywords in my FCS file actually contain that information. So you see, I will drag and drop my file as I did at the beginning. And this allows me to show you that if you select keywords, again, you can retrieve any keywords as we did for the file name, for example. And what I want to do now is retrieving a keyword that is in my file and know it's there, it's called group. So you see now in the spreadsheet, I have the experimental group. So file one is the control. This is another control. Then I have another control here at the bottom. And then I have one, two, and three treated with drag A, one, two, three treated with drag B. So no matter if they are not, uh, let's say, ordered, uh, the box and whisker will be uh, smart enough to group them. And that's it. So let me just in insert the box and whisker. Um, by default, as actually it happened for the bar plot, Bosk and Whisker, it's just plotting the first column. So this allows me to show you how you can format it. So if you go here in the format overlay for this uh, box and whisker, uh, you can select here the column category, sorry, the group, um, the group column. And in this case, it's the experimental group. And that's it. You see, I'm plotting all the control here, all the treated, treated A, all the treated B, and I'm plotting the number of events. And you see, it's super fast in live. It's live updating. It's amazing. So again, think about doing this outside FCS Express. Every time that you change something in your analysis, you will need to export again and recreate again the um, the chart. So it's it's really useful. I also want to show you the uh, scatter plot, uh, the scatter with regression. So this, and probably the good best example is what we were doing before. Uh, so the titration. So for example, just grab the scatter with regression. So I'm going to click on this spreadsheet. I'm loading the scatter with regression. Um, again, by default, it's um, loading column one and column two. In this case, I want to uh, plot on the y-axis the staining index. By default, it's a linear regression, uh, but if you go here, format regression fit, you can grab any type of regression. We have 19 types of regression. So um, I don't know, let's say Michael is Menten. And you see, you also have access to the coefficient. In this case, for Michael is Menten, you just have two, which is the Vmax and the KM. And being this uh, uh, fitting a regression fit, you also have the R square. Um, but again, uh, the main point is that this is live updating too. So if you change this gate, for example, now everything gets recalculating and you see that the uh, regression and the, uh, all the scatter plot, it's updating live. Any, any question about uh, formatting spreadsheet and creating chart? Um, any curiosity you have? Okay, okay. So let me close this example. 
And um, what I want to show you now is that how FCS Express is flexible in terms of um, reporting. So let me make a little bit of space here. What I want to show you is that each cell of the spreadsheet can actually be considered as a token. So not only the token that you actually use to populate the spreadsheet. So you see, this is the number of events for the sales gate for this file. This is actually a token and you can clearly see it's a token because it's live updating, right? Um, but every, like if you create some, if you calculate some formula, for example, again, let's go back here and say that we want the average um, here from this column, okay? This is 99.5 and blah, blah, blah. So this can be considered as a token. So if you want, uh, you can open any text box. And when you do right click insert token, uh, I'm sure most of you already know that we have tons of different tokens type like statistic keywords and so on. You see here we have spreadsheet cell value. So I can receive any value from any cells of the spreadsheet. I will select here the spreadsheet that I want to grab the statistic from and here in the cell address I will type let me see this is E11 okay you see this is 9956 it's rounded you can round it as you want actually I didn't show you but here in the number format uh, you have the decimal so that's not uh, a problem. And again, uh, since this is token, it's live updating. So you can really customize your report. So uh, this can be average of square root. Okay. Um, this is the first thing that I want to show you. So um, dragging and dropping, sorry, uh, populating a text box with a spreadsheet token, a spreadsheet cells. Uh, but maybe most of you uh, or some of you um, also deal uh, with custom tokens. So you may remember custom tokens are old friends in uh, FCS Express. We have custom tokens since a long time, um, long time before having the spreadsheet. So they were great when you wanted in the past to to make some formula, um, but of course the spreadsheet, I mean, it's much more user friendly, but custom token can be used in the same way. So you see, I can say equal one, two, three times two. And then if I drag and drop this token here, you can see the results of the formula. So what I want to show you is that first, <clears throat> sorry, you can um, populate the spreadsheet with custom token. So I can drag and drop the custom token inside the spreadsheet, okay? And I can also create further formula like this times two, okay? And if you change something in the custom token, like if this is three, okay? Now this is updating and this is updating. So first thing, you can populate the spreadsheet with the custom token. This is really important for those of you who already have like uh, all the layout from uh, like V6, V5 with custom token, and you want to use the result from those custom token in the in the Excel. So you can simply do what I what I've done right now. Uh, but I want to show you that you can also do the opposite. So let's say that I want to calculate this new custom token that um, take like the average of the square root and do something. You see here, right click, insert token. You see we have spreadsheet cell value. I will click on first spreadsheet and the cell address, we already know it's E11. I want this token to be a um, numeric token. And let's say that I want to multiply it by, I don't know, 100. Now I want to show you the results. So if I drag and drop this into my layout, this is the results. So this times 100 and it's rounded, but you already know that you can uh, change the decimal. Does it make sense? Do you have any question about custom token integration and spreadsheet? Um, so again, feel free to ask any question you want.
Um, so last but not least, um, as I was mentioning before, um, the, the spreadsheet content and actually the spreadsheet calculation can be exported. So, I mean, the fact that you can deal with the spreadsheet and with all the calculation inside FCS Express um, doesn't really mean that uh, you will not be able to um, move those results out of FCS Express. Maybe because you have some colleague that want to uh, store their data in Excel, so you can still do that. And I want to show you two examples. So the first is, let's say, let me get a little bit of clean here. Let's say that you want here to calculate some uh, condensed statistic uh, like the minimum here and here we want to calculate the sum. Okay, so maybe we do all those analyses, um, all those plot, all those gates, all those um, uh, tokens here, but maybe what we want to uh, retrieve from this whole analysis uh, is just these three values, okay? Like for example, in, in before when we were dealing with the titration, the only real value that you want to export is just the, the, the amount of antibody uh, that you need to add, okay, for your assay. So it's just one value. Uh, maybe you have a super complex layout, but maybe the, num the, the, um, the statistics that you want to export are very few. Um, I don't want to say that we do not like copy and paste. Uh, we do not like to manually type this value in like Excel or words. Uh, so I want to show you the first uh, option that you have and it's using batch processing. So uh, we do have an entire webinar dedicated on batch processing. So I'm going straight to the export to Excel. I'm going to export my Excel on my desktop. So batch to Excel. I will click OK and what I want to do is to export those three value. OK, you already know that you can populate this export by dragging and dropping. For example, when you want to drag and drop a gates, a plot, a token, and I'm doing exactly the same. So I'm going to drag and drop this. OK. So those are the value that I want to export. Right. I can also customize the, the the header in Excel, which is not this one. If you want to customize the header, um, just go here, properties, and in the field, if you keep it blank, in this case, it will be called like B11, um, but I know this is the minimum number event, okay? I will not change the other one, so you will see the difference. The difference. Sorry, this is high. Okay, uh, once you're ready, you can just click on run and this is my Excel. So you see it's just three values and I want to show you that I have customized the header of the first column. I didn't customize the header of the other two, so they are still saying just C11 and E11 because of course FCS Express doesn't know um, how you want to call those those value um, so the right click properties as I show you before here um, it's a good way it's the way to go so just type in whatever you want so this is the first example of export the second example uh, is uh, what you can do when uh, you want to export the entire uh, Excel content so just click on this and go here layout export so this is very very cool because as you will see i'm just export um, to excel what you're exporting here actually i want to show you that we have different um different for file format like excel csv uh, xml txt i want to to show you the excel uh, format um it's pretty cool because you are not exporting like um flat number i don't know how to say like non-live updating number so if you look at this excel you can clearly see that what you are exporting it's actually the real formula okay uh this is if b2 higher than 10,000. sorry it's this is a um, my italian excel so it's say but it's actually if if you open on a um us excel uh it's i otherwise it's normal so this is the exact same format that i typed in in fcs express so this is the same format that i typed in for the square root okay 
So again, you see you are also keeping the conditional formatting and this is not um, uh, this is not like fixed, okay? This is live updating. So if I change this and I say this is like 9,000, you will see that it won't be red, okay? Because now it's lower than 10,000. And if I change this to something like 30, 13,000, now you will see that all the other one will be basically empty, no bars, because this bar is basically huge, okay? If I do this, now you see the bar. So just to show you that this is still updating. Of course, it's an Excel. It's not updating if you move a gate. Uh, that's something that you can only do with the integrated spreadsheet, but it still um, give you the flexibility to change whatever you want. Like this is the sum and this is the median, sorry, the average, and this is the mean, okay? So I hope this was... Um, useful for you. Um, let me just go back to my um, initial layout. I want to summarize by saying that it's not centered, no worry. Um, I just want to summarize by saying that the spreadsheet really give you access to all the functionality that you usually have in Excel, but within uh, FCS Express. So you will not need to perform this um, calculation downstream, but you can do you can do them directly within Excel. Um, I can see a question here. Is there an easy way um, to export data uh, into Spotfire? Um, I would say that you can try to export as CSV or TXT and see whether you can uh, import that data into Spotfire. Um, but again, um, try to reproduce what you're doing here in FCS, in FCS Express. Um, and if you see that we are missing some formula, uh, do not be afraid, just, just wrote in, in our, to our support and ask, can you please add that kind of formula? So we are really um, relying on feedback from users. For example, in the first uh, version, we didn't have ANOVA, then people asked us to implement ANOVA and we add ANOVA. So we, are, we, are, we will be glad to implement new formula in our spreadsheet or new plot type again, uh, sorry, chart type. Um, then I want to stress again that the user interface, it's really like Excel. So um, really nothing to be scared about. Um, you can easily graph the uh, spreadsheet uh, results into pie charts, box and whisker, bar plot, scatter plot. Um, so it's really easy. And then of course you can integrate the spreadsheet functionality with the batch processing. You can export directly to uh, Excel. So it's, it's really flexible. I want to say a final thanks to you. Um, if you didn't try FCS Express yet, um, you can just download the 30 days trial. Um, that's um, very easy to do, just navigate on our website. Um, FCS Express 7, it's compatible with all the previous versions before V5 and V6. Uh, if you are still dealing with V3 layout, just shoot us an email, we will give you some trick how to make them compatible. And of course, if you have any question, just send an email to, um, to our support. Um, to our support system. So I see another question here. Um, getting data into one large column instead of multiple column, if that makes sense. Well, um, you cannot really add data exactly as in Excel. You cannot really add multiple data in the same column uh, because I mean, Excel won't recognize them as different uh, series of data. So here is the same. Um, just keep in mind to work as in Excel or as in GraphPad. So in each column, we have different um, content, your different data type, different statistic, and that will make your life super easy. Any, any other question? Okay. It seems that... Um, no question are coming in. So I want to say again, uh, once more, thanks to all of you and um, keep in touch.